going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back for part two of our interview here with NC State cheerle- cheerleading. We got Coach Harold Trammell, and we got uh, two NC State cheerleading team captains and uh, Jordan and Trevor here with us. If you haven't checked out part one yet, make sure to go and check that out first and foremost, and then come right back here so that way we can that way you can join us and pick up right where we left off, which was really kind of talking about the teams actually went to nationals this year. So uh, if I have it correctly, and again, I, I'm going to kind of highlight, obviously, not only just the cheerleading side, but the dance side as well. But really, it, it seems like there was basically five main teams. With, with the cheerleading side, there was uh, the small co-ed and the large co-ed. And then, for, and then you also have the club team as well, the lady pack, uh, the all-girl uh, club team. And then from the dance side, you have the jazz team, and then you have the rally team. And uh, just to kind of recap, so again, obviously a small co-ed, which everybody should know about by now, won the national title, which is amazing. And the large co-ed got seventh. And then also, too, uh, the all-girl club team got second. And yeah. then uh, I think it was the jazz team got fifth, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Um, so, so I wanted to kind of ask first, because uh, this was a huge question that we got a ton about. How does scoring work? Because I saw when I was looking at the lady pack, uh, they said that they got a, a zero. They got zero two days in a row, which apparently is very rare. And so I'm sitting here going, wait, what? So like, so is it so, like golf? I, 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 yeah. Like, well, because like, I, I think that a lot of fans, including myself, you know, it's kind of like with wrestling, that wrestling is very tough to follow because it's like, how does the scoring work? So I think what you're leading, if we can go ahead and, you know, get that solved right now in terms of how does scoring work? Like, what are they looking for? Then I think that would help even too. So, uh, uh, coach, if you, or if you want to hand it off yeah. to Trevor or, or Jordan, it's up to you. Mm-hmm. I can take this one and then they can fill in if I um, miss anything. But, um, <laughs> the way, the way judging works for, for cheer, the way, uh, Lady Pack was so excited was they hit zero deductions. So basically the scoring, okay. they did their routine, they performed it at a high level, and they had no um, no deductions. So bobbles and falls count into deductions. Um, so when they're basically making mistakes. So they're saying that they did a mistake-free mm-hmm. routine. Um, it's what they're saying when they hit zero two days in a row. Uh, from a scoring perspective, um, there are multiple categories for cheer. So they're, they're judging your standing tumbling. They're judging your running tumbling. They're judging your jumps, your pyramids, your partner stunts, and your baskets. So all of those are categories. Okay. And within those categories, they're looking at the level of difficulty that you perform. So there's a, a, a rubric. The, the higher, more difficult skills um, score higher. So difficulty is based out of a, a, of a five. Execution is also based out of a five. So you can do really hard things and perform them at a, at a low level. So you get a five for difficulty, but maybe a two or a three for execution. So the, the ideal situation is to perform difficult skills at a high level. So you're getting close to a five for difficulty, close to a five for execution in all those different areas on the score sheet. There's also categories like overall effect. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, collegiate image. So those those are scored out of a 10, um, but those are more general. There's not like a difficulty in execution for those categories but that's pretty much what you're looking for so you want to score high for difficulty high for execution and hit zero or have as few deductions as possible mm-hmm. so Absolutely. just to follow up what, what would then uh what would then be a perfect score in a, in a routine what, what is it out is it out of 100 or yeah they yeah they, they basically um most of the most of the divisions will have a uh what's it called it basically your base score um, the base score sometimes for some divisions is like a 90 um, but they'll end up multiplying things by by a factor to make the overall score out of 100 because everybody understands a score out of 100 it's kind of hard when you're doing a score out of 90 yeah you don't get it sometimes absolutely cool cool jordan trevor do you miss anything no he, he, he did it covered it yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool great yeah, no, I think that'll definitely help. Just uh, again, it, it's uh, I saw that in the you know again, it, it, whoever was doing the Instagram account maybe didn't necessarily think about it, but I was like sitting there going, "What's like? Why are you proud about getting a zero? This isn't that weird. <laughs> so, but yeah, no zero deductions. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So I, I do because like this is the first time I've ever heard about the lady pack, and I remember my wife and I showed up, 
and we were like, oh, and say cheerleading got some new uniforms, and like, oh man, they got like it's got like lady pack on the back. We're like, cool, okay, never, like that's that's a cool that's a cool nickname. Uh, but then we're like, oh, like club team, interesting. So, how does that work in terms of uh, is it kind of because I'm sure during because again, I'm bringing this up because again, this didn't come up when I when I interviewed Camille, but uh, is it do 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 people choose to be a part of the clear the club team or is it that when you try out if maybe it's just that you know they're not quite there to making it to the varsity level that you have the opportunity that you're offered the opportunity to compete uh as a part of the lady pack if you're a woman obviously since you're since it's all girl club team not no men there included as well yeah so that Uh, one the the way it's set up is lady pack is a club team it's um basically student-led they have two coaches um that that coach the team um, okay. they are clubs so they're not, um, cheering games or sideline. They're just competing. Um, yeah, it is a team, um, full of, um, female athletes that compete, um, at, at local and some of the other competitions, regional competitions, and then also compete at nationals. So they did, they did a really nice job this year in finishing second place. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, like, it, it, do do they feed into the varsity program, or potentially can they feed into the varsity program? Especially because if they got second place, and I think I read correctly, they got the fifth or sixth highest score of the whole weekend. I mean, they're obviously pretty daggone good, and definitely from what we, what we saw, they were pretty daggone good. So I mean, I'm sure that you know, for next year's team, when it comes to replacing seniors, that you're definitely watching them for sure. Am I, yeah. am I right? There's some athletes on that team um, that may end up at some point um, cheering on the team that we coach. Um, there are different levels at college nationals. So um, the two teams that we coach that fall under athletics are competing in an advanced division. Um, Mm -hmm. All girls chosen to compete in an intermediate division, which has some skill restrictions as far as um, they're not allowed to do some of the skills that we'll be performing in an advanced division. So um, they still have their own score rubric so they can score high scores based off of the um, the level of skills that they're performing. Interesting. So, so, so coach, I, I kind of had a question for you. Um, I've read, you know, some things about cheering becoming like a varsity sport on the collegiate level. Is that something, obviously I, w- I would assume that you, you and, and the team would be in favor of, but is that something that has the, the possibility of gaining traction f- for the NCAA or is that just kind of a pipe dream? Uh, there is something that is gaining some traction. So they created there have been two different options that have been around for a while. So there's the acro and tumbling approach, which has a several schools. Um, it's probably 10, maybe 15. They're competing in acro. Um, and then there's a new emerging sport called stunt. So stunt is a, um, a version of tier that looks like it may be adopted at some point in the near future by the NCAA. Um, it is different than what we're traditionally used to. So the two teams that we have under athletics, we're um, cheering on the sidelines. We're traveling with our teams, um, but we're also competing. Um, Stunt is a different format where basically you're you're on a team and you're traveling to compete. So they have it structured where there are specific skill categories that you're performing basically head to head. Um, and you're looking at, or can you perform this skill better than the opposing team, um, and they'll do a routine, like a, a, tip, a typical uh, routine of music at the end. Um, that will be um, how they'll close out the competition. So there are aspects that are that are attractive. Um, it may bring more scholarships, um, more likely to the female side of things, um, kind of counting against Title Nine, those types of things. Um, it is it's tricky though because uh, it doesn't have that sideline or that traditional sheer um mm. aspect and that's what i've really appreciated in what we're able to do at state currently is that we have that sideline experience the ability to travel our teams the ability to support our teams um in our athletic venues and also on the road um, and that's a it's a very unique experience because uh, being on a sideline was as those things are happening i, I grew up playing sports um, i played football i wrestled I played baseball growing up so I, I enjoyed being on a sideline. And um, in high school, I, I was playing sports, and I always wanted to play college football, but I was 135 pounds, which was okay for wrestling, but it was not going to be um, 
playing college football at a high level. So I got talked into yeah. cheering, and uh, it was obviously a good decision for me. But um, one thing, one of the things that I was intrigued by was the, the athleticism that it, it required, the tumbling, the, the yeah. stunts uh, that you do. I love lifting weights. I love um, being in that atmosphere and that environment. And cheer a lot in its current state. Um, allows us to do that, but it also allows us the opportunity to to showcase the the skills that we learn in a competition format. So I think that's the uh, the ultimate kind of uh, yeah vision. The, it, it's it's nice to have all of those things versus just the competition side of things. So right, we don't get to compete as much as we would if we were competing stunt, but also like like Jordan and Trevor when they did All Stars, they competed probably I don't know six, eight, ten times a year um, at various competitions, um, nationals Absolutely. leading up to worlds, those kinds of things. Um, so it is different for some that have only done all-star cheer uh, to, to only compete at the end of the season. So I think that there's going to be some gives and takes, um, definitely some some things that will, will evolve or, or will change if stunt becomes uh, an actual NCAA sport. Yeah. And I do want to bring in uh, Jordan and Trevor here. So, Trevor, you know, one of the biggest things which I saw was an article that said that this uh, 2023 National Championships Daytona was actually broke the record for the most. It was the highest attended national championship uh, in in history uh, with over 20,000 spectators that were present. And the first thing which I want to say, too, is that when I was watching the videos back of the performances, it looked like State had a really good, you know, cheer squad from the fans behind it whether they were nc state fans or maybe just fans of cheerleading in general uh so you know first uh, you know trevor just kind of talk to me about you know the you know like you know like did you kind of have that like whoa moment you know i mean i, I know you've competed in nationals before but i mean could could you kind of tell that man this is this has grown a lot, you know, for sure, from maybe your freshman year. And then, you know, Jordan, once you kind of finished, I want to kind of hear, because I'm sure you probably went to nationals when your sister competed. Uh, you know, do you, how much have you kind of seen the sport of cheerleading grow and, and the support behind it? So, Trevor, I'll let you go first. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of people there this year. And fortunately, um, we were in first heading into day two. And that meant we performed last of the day right before awards. So we had we had all the eyes on us, which was just an amazing experience. And the definitely definitely the attraction of cheer has definitely grown, especially through these last couple of years, with, especially with that Netflix show that came out showcasing two, two of the teams that come down. Yeah, just to add on that, um, like Trevor said, there was a huge crowd and it was kind of wild because before, before we went on stage, we were behind the band shell and we couldn't see a single thing. So as we ran on the stage, we got to see all of our fans and our family members were right in front just staring at us and it was just an awesome feeling. And like Trevor said, this board of cheerleading has grown so much and I think on top of the amazing athletes that were all there in Daytona, there's so many fans that come to support and like watch what it's about. Yeah. So, so I have a question for both, both of you, uh, Jordan and Trevor. Uh, so you're both captains. So first question would be, what are your, some of your responsibilities as being captains? And then the second part, when you're not a captain, like what is your role on the cheer team? What is your specialty? Those types of things. Um, I'll say, I said, I said there's nothing really specific about being a captain because as a cheerleader, it's all it's everybody's job to become a leader and we all help each other out, whether it's one way or another. The the term captain isn't really anything special. It just it just helps us uh, communicate between the team and the, the coaches a little bit easier. Um, but I would say that yeah, there's no really it's nothing really super special about being captain. Um, because I think everybody has the opportunity to fill that captain role. Cool. Yeah. And then I guess one, 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 one more before you get in. Are you elected captain by coach staff or by your peers? Um, so at the beginning of this year, we had the returners vote on us. And that went to the cool. coaches and they announced it. Got you. Cool. That's awesome. Love that. Love that for sure. You know, just that 
and again, you definitely hats off to you, Coach Trammel as well, because obviously that's, you know, a great, you know, but it's it's a it's a you know, even though you might not say it's much, then day you're still looked at as you know you are a captain. It's especially for maybe the first timers that come in, you know, when they hear that, oh, you know, Jordan and Trevor and whoever else are captains. You're definitely looked at, obviously, you know, in a leadership role, even though there may not be necessarily a difference per se. But, you know, definitely love that answer, Trevor, about, uh, you know, how everybody really has to take on a leadership role. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, did you kind of feel as well to kind of build off of that? Because uh, the big, biggest thing which I noticed at the dress rehearsal was the amount of alumni that were there. And obviously people that were, I know, one of the hosts, uh, the, that both the hosts were part of the 2018 National uh, Championship winners. Uh, so, you know, when you came in, did you kind of get a feel of that? Like, it, it's a it's a reputation thing that I'm getting into here. Like, it's not like that. We're, I mean, obviously, we're continuing to build this program for sure. But at the end of the day, I mean, there's there's a reputation here, you know, multiple national titles. You know, we're trying to get our first one, you know, since 2018. So, I mean, did you kind of get that feel coming in of like kind of a weight on your shoulders, you know, with all the alumni that have done accomplished so much even before you? I think we definitely do a lot to protect our image with the program. And I think the coaches do a really good job of selecting the people who are right for the team and who can uphold that image for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yeah. And uh, I do want to you know, talk a little bit too that one of the, one of the other last things that really stood out to me from the uh, dress rehearsal was the energy from the coaching staff during routines because uh, I, I I don't I, I know there's at least a couple of uh, you know assistant coaches and uh, at one point uh, it was actually during the last large co-ed uh, run which uh, you know I know obviously didn't go so hot during the rehearsal dress rehearsal which obviously killed at nationals but uh you know so but literally i was recording it and i looked over and i saw the assistant coaches just losing their minds and coach harold too and i i just literally i just i just veered off and i just started watching the assistant coaches and uh it's awesome i love it i've never seen coaches get as hyped and even to like watching the playbacks back from nationals you see in the bottom left corner all these people jumping up and down <laughs> things like that uh so talk to me you know jordan trevor in terms of i mean do you watch for that during routines i mean i'm sure you have your you know you gotta stay focused but i mean i'm sure you almost can't help but 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 you know not see that in the corner of your eye i'll say yeah we definitely we definitely see it and hear it and just like knowing that they're that excited means we're doing really well so like we don't want to stop what we're doing and just keep that going so like that energy like we feed off of that energy and that's something we love to see yeah it's really why we do it is to make them proud and it's just so nice wow. to see that and like we were talking about like hitting zero earlier we basically if we can see them in the crowd if they're doing this that means we're hitting zero. That's <laughs> so that's cool. one of the main things we <laughs> when we're watching. I love it. They're, oh, they're like, they're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's awesome how they're almost like, yeah, no. But like, I, don't even, I don't even have to see what the judges gave us. Yeah, you guys, you know, you're good. Great yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. We'll know as soon as we walk <laughs> off the mat if we did well. That's awesome. Hey, I love that is, it. That is yeah. one of the things with, with cheer as a sport. It's a judge sport, just like gymnastics. And you – you take pride in the, the opportunity you have to be on stage and the, the, the feeling, the connection that you have and the, the energy um, that's, that's going on while you're on stage. You, you never know whether judges are always going to like your routine versus someone else's routine. So that's something that's a little bit uncontrollable. But um, what, you, what you always want to do is make sure that you've done your best performance possible. And um, Regardless of what what happens score wise and placement wise, you, you're always going to be proud of what you do on mat. I mean, it's going to be an unforgettable feeling. So um, that's always what you're hoping for as a coach that you feel like your team has done their absolute best in front of the um, at nationals. So um, there's no better feeling than that. Just knowing that yes, 
all, all the work that they put in was able to be demonstrated for everyone and that will be captured forever as far as the videos and everything that will um, be able to be shared afterwards. Yeah, that's something small co-ed really kept in mind. Like before day one, it was like, we weren't really doing this for anybody else but each other and the coaches. Like we were like, let's do this for each other. Let's go hit a good routine for ourselves so we can feel good about it. Amen. Yep. Greg, did you have anything to add? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, coach, I know all championships are great and wonderful and and they're all, you know, unique in their own mind. Is there one that stood out for, from you either from your cheering days or from, you know, your, your time at coaching where, you know, maybe there's just a unique story that you, the team maybe wasn't expected to, to win a championship because I, I honestly – Looking from the from the outside in, I don't know if there's necessarily favorites going into these things. You know, you know, anything can happen on any given cheer competition. But is there something unique that you're just like looking back at all the time that you've been at state, going, "Wow, like this one means so much more than than another one." That's a tough question. I guess each each team has their own story, and they're all sure. different. They're all unique for different reasons, and. Uh, I, I think they're they're all special in their in their own right because Absolutely. when you look at it as a coach, you you've been there. You it, it's happened for you before um, with other teams, and it's always so exciting to see the team that you're with reacting to that experience, especially when it's for their first time. It's like that's what you do it for is to be able to like to see them go through those emotions and be like, this really happened. Um, yeah, because I, I, each I, I would... team always puts in. A ton of work and yeah. it doesn't work out every year for for a team to win um so it really is truly just amazing when when things come together um for a team to be able to perform especially a team that can perform two days in a row and, and knock their routines out in the park um it's it's really unique for that um for the team to have that experience yeah, I was going to say, Coach, it's probably the most satisfying thing for you is seeing the maturation of a team, whether they win a championship or, you know, just fall short of it. It's just seeing your, your team members achieve their, their lifetime goals, right? It is. And winning a championship is always a goal of athletes to come and, and cheer for, for NC State. And we've had some amazing teams um, that maybe are some of our most talented teams where it, it didn't come together for whatever reason. It wasn't because there was a better team. It just something happened and a skill didn't go the way you wanted. Um, and you look back at it and say, what was the journey? What was the process? And when you look back at the journey and the process, um, you can always take pride in, in what you did. Um, you're going to, um, the process is, is, is tough. It's, we start in April and we finish in April. So it's, it's, it, it's a full year of working and growing as a team to achieve the goals that you have. Uh, and a statement that we make to the team, it's, it's fun to be good. And nobody knows the process to get there other than you and the ones that are around you. Um, and it's, it's tough. It's hard. Anything that's worth um, doing, anything that's worth celebrating is going to, is going to have a lot of work that goes into it. So, we, we enjoy the process of working hard. We say it all the time. We're a blue collar team. We, we take good kids and um, kids that are want to be here to get a good education, want to buy into the to the things that we're 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 trying to achieve, and work hard. It, it, we always say it, it's it's going to be hard, um, and if we get used to it being hard, and that's an expectation, you, you're never surprised when you show up at practice and it's hard, um, or we we get to competition where we're asking you to do something and it's hard. It's, we get used to doing things that are hard and. Um, that allows you when you get into the environment where with cheer, there's, there's no defense, there's no timeouts. You basically coach hits play and it has to go the way it needs to go. And with one competition a year, you, you don't have opportunities to make mistakes. You've got to train yourself and train your athletes to be able to perform under pressure in situations that aren't going to be ideal. Um, it's cool to talk about how you, you pulled certain things off that probably shouldn't happen. Um, I know we, we had a part of the pyramid that the casual fan never would have noticed. Um, we had where the pyramid ended up finishing out in front of 
um, the base that was holding it. And she basically squatted the pyramid and then stood up with it and like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. Um, and uh, wow. those are the things wow. you, you talk about because the, the routine scored extremely high. Um, and those are the situations you get, you get in. Wow. And if you train yourself, to, I can I can hold anything for, for a second. Or, or two seconds that you, that you need to, to pop it off and move to the next thing. Like that's that's what you train for. And the team did a great job of, of making everything, all the hard things that we do, look easy. And that, that's that's yeah. that's uh, I, I think one of the things that really is cool about cheer is you have all of these hard things that nobody really knows how hard they are, um, but you, you want to make them look effortless. Like that's one that's the beauty of cheer is making what you're doing look effortless um and that's where i, I think it really wows people um yeah so and, so and, and, go ahead, Greg. yeah i just said yeah so jordan and and trevor when you hear coach given those kind glowing words how, how does that just make you feel like that you and your teammates were able to do everything that they asked you to do and then the, and then give a little bit more um yeah it's just it's so surreal. Like I remember, I remember like what what Harold was just talking about was like day one. It's like the like Harold always says, it takes twenty people to form one routine, and no more, no less. Everything comes from everybody. So like, it's just a big trust thing. So like I like I trust Jordan, and I know she trusts me, and then it's just back and forth through the whole routine, and we just believe in each other. I love it. I love it. And, uh, and and just kind of end it off too, because I mean, first of all, that was an awesome. So I think for in terms of the deep conversation pieces, we'll end it there because that was a, a, a great tidbit there for sure. But two kind of fun things. Uh, so first thing is, so coach, uh, has there ever been a time where you know, just like you know, Jordan was hinting at earlier, where you know, a routine will be finished and you're like, yep, yeah, nope, perfect, great job, like you know, zero deductions. But then you know, the judging staff does give a deduction, saying you go what, and you like, like, have you ever like you know had one of those moments or are you kind of like a coach where it's like oh well like you know can't do anything about it but i mean like i don't know i, I feel like yeah. you go bobby knight on him coach so i mean come on <laughs> we, we, like, we've I'm had some years competing in the game time. day division where we we performed amazing and we did harder skills than everybody and the judges didn't like it and uh okay. we, we didn't win and there was nothing we could do about it other than take pride in the fact that we knew we performed harder skills than everyone. We knew we executed better than everyone. We knew that the crowd loved it better than everyone. So you, in the end of the day, you take pride in what you do. And you just know as in a judge sport, some things are out of your control. Um, and did we did we uh, advocate for our team? Of course we did. We went and talked to the judges and okay. um, asked, hey, what, 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 what happened? Um, what, what, what were you guys looking for that we weren't doing? And uh, I remember vividly... Um, 2019 after winning 2018 um, what they told us was the skills weren't practical i'm like but did we execute them at a high level yes but we don't think that's practical for a game day environment so what we said was come come watch us do those skills at a game um, and they did the next year they came and watched us perform hard skills at a game because that's what we do like we, you don't train <laughs> hard skills but not to show them to people like Cheering and Carter Finley is our biggest stage. So we have 60,000 people there. Why not show them the cool things that we work on? So tumbling for run out, tumbling for scores in the end zone after uh, after touchdowns and field goals. Timeouts. Why, why don't we do all those cool, hard things? So um, they said it wasn't practical. We showed them we do it at the games all the time. Um, definitely didn't agree that year with um, – team not scoring well when we we did really hard things and made it look really easy which is the name of the game i mean coach what were they looking for you guys do extra push-ups because all the touchdowns we score like i mean like what is that more practical i don't know <laughs> they, I, we, we will never understand yeah, why it. that that year we did not score the way we should um but yeah and, and the team has to know that they hit perfect routines two days in a row um, and it was harder and better performed than everyone else's. So, in the end of the day, That's we took pride in, in what we did. Um, and it, it's a hard sell to kids because you, you want to see the work you you do and you and you put in be rewarded. Sometimes it's just absolutely 
things don't, I don't know, life isn't fair. Yep. And that's, uh, that's been a go. moment that we had to share with our team um, in that, in that division. It's, it's, there's not, uh, there's not, a, there's not a lot of structure or a rubric that says, Hey, we're going to score these things a certain way. Um, that's one of the things I like about large co-ed, small co-ed and the all girl division. It's pretty clear. They tell you, if you do this, this is going to allow you to score in this range. So you, you pick the things that you're good at that help you score in a high range and you have to execute them. And if you execute them, you can be rewarded. So love to hear it. And then last question, which I'm going to hand over to Jordan here, uh, since I know we haven't heard from her in a little bit is so one of the, one of the coolest things, which I loved was in the post, uh, post championship celebration. Uh, I saw, uh, I think you all were up on stage with the trophy and all of a sudden you see coach Trammell come out of nowhere and, and, and do a uh, <laughs> kick split or whatever. That and was also, terrible. <laughs> which was, terrible. Well, and, and again, I will say, Coach, that you know that that my wife and I are big gymnastics followers, so so we know that the point of that is you're trying to get you know parallel. Which you know, hey, listen, I know you probably didn't have time to stretch or nothing. They were probably like, hey, come on, Coach, come on, Coach, and you yeah. did it. So hats off to you for doing that and for not splitting your pants either, though. So again, <laughs> hats off and kudos to you there. But I mean, Jordan, I mean, so give me the backstory. Was that like, did the coach not know about that? Like, you know, were you guys saying ahead of time? Like, you know, what's, or is that like something that he typically does? Like, what's the story behind that? Oh, he for sure knew <laughs> because it's, it's every year when they win, he does his running toe touch. So that is what okay. the team has promised if we win. I think that's the main reason we won and we wanted to do so well. <laughs> that's awesome. It's to see I the love it. toe touch, the iconic running toe touch. Uh, all right. I love so it. Follow up question for both Jordan and Trevor. Put your judging hat on. What do you give coach? <laughs> and remember, you've already won a championship and the season's over. And I'm sure your, your spot's already, you know, in a good standing for next year. So go ahead. I would say 10 out of 10 because it made me so happy. High level, uh, high level skill, good. high level effort. Is that, that, that what you're going with? Yeah. Yes. I would say a 10, 10 out of 10 of, as well because – I just wanted to see it for so long, and I'm in so person. happy I got finally got the chance to see it. I know, I know, Coach was a little little bummed about the the for height sure. and level of his toe touch, but it was definitely yeah. amazing to see. We loved it. Yeah, gravity's not appreciating me as I age, <laughs> loving holding me on the ground. So I know that feeling. And the camera angle of the picture made it look a lot lot better than the video. I, I tell you that. So. Hey, I have to, I'll have to continue good. to work on it for uh, for future years. Got to get my toes pointed. That was uh, that did not look too good in the in the high tops. Yeah, well, you, again, the, yeah. the high tops definitely restricted your toe point too. So we can we can put something out there. No deduction then, right? No deduction. And, and, and... And we got to get you preparing for it every year, Coach Trammell. I mean, hey, every single year going to be doing that uh, whenever we win. So uh, I'll be ready. First of all, Coach. Hey, exactly. So, Coach Jordan, Trevor, I really do appreciate all of you for coming on. Uh, you know, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on all the success and uh, best of luck next year. And uh, also, too, thank you so much for all the support that you all give to all of our teams. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, can't say enough how much we support and really do, uh, you know, do all that we can to make it clear to Wolfpack Nation that I mean that if there's any team or set of student athletes that deserve as much like there's no other student athlete out there that deserves more respect and, and support than you all simple as that because most of what you do at least you know 90 percent of the time is for others not for yourself you know and so 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 congratulations and thank you so much for all the time and effort that you all put into this for sure absolutely and if i can just yeah. chime out that you bring at least half or if not more of the energy in all of our sporting events right even when the team's not doing well you still are there trying to pick us up as fans and pick up your 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 fellow athletes so from a, from one Wolfpack fan to to you guys we, we appreciate you thank, thank you. you that's thank always you. good to hear yeah we appreciate it it's, it's what we enjoy doing it's uh it's part of the role you're, you're cheer leaders you gotta lead cheers you gotta bring energy and um, we appreciate everything that every, everyone gives back to us the support has always been amazing uh, we love the fact that we feel like we're a part of, of what's going on um Coaches give back to us just like uh, they do to, to other teams. Uh, just thinking back to when we were on the plane going to the NCAA tournament, um, Coach Keats came back 
talk to the band, talk to the cheerleaders, let us know how much he appreciated us uh, for what we do. Um, that definitely is awesome. goes a long way. A lot of the other coaches do the same thing. Um, they appreciate us being at their events, um, supporting their athletes. So it doesn't go unmentioned. So that, that is awesome. I would say about NC State is yeah. we're, we're, we don't go unnoticed. People do respect the, the fact that we're there. Coach Doran, um, Coach Moore, um, Coach Pop, um, volleyball, any, anything that we're involved in, we, we definitely um, – coaches will go out of their way. They'll let us know that they appreciate what we're doing while we're there. And that, that goes a long way. That's awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, Wolfpack Nation, if you don't already follow uh, Interstate Cheerly, make sure to go do that on Twitter and Instagram for sure. And again, just support these men and women whenever you can, uh, you know, however you can, whether it's giving a high five, saying, you know, uh, thank you or cheering along with them. I, I know from talking to Camille, that's one of the biggest things that she always says is, you know, when I said, like, you know, what can State fans do? And then she was like, just be involved in, in the cheers, you know, just, you know, help us, you know, uh, you know, you know, pronounce this thing out for sure. So make sure mm. to do that. And if you see Jordan Trevor, give him an extra high five, you know, uh, you know, next year for sure. Uh, but again, y'all, uh, if you, if you enjoy this episode, first of all, do us a big, big favor and uh, give us a uh, follow Tuffy talk now on Twitter, or Instagram, hit that like button and make sure to hit that subscribe button. So you don't miss out any future NC state content, but thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll see y'all soon as always go pack y'all. Go pack. <laughs>